Hey everybody, this week we are doing side-by-side -side box plots. It's important we know what kind of variables we're displaying here. So let's hop to the top of the screen. And here we are, the first variable, the Y variable right here is going to be quantitative. If we go down this column right here, you'll notice we have a quantitative Y variable, which is the variable we want to understand. Let's go back down here to the bottom now, and you'll notice the other variable, the X variable is categorical. Now that we know what we're going to be displaying, let's go ahead and make the graphic. So here we are with visualization number four. We are gonna make side-by-side -side box plots. It's important that we know that this is a bivariate display, which means we're displaying two variables at one time. So we are going to display a Y variable that is quantitative and an X variable that is categorical. Make sure to have that in your notes. Side-by-side -side box plots display a Y variable that is quantitative, and that is because box plots display quantitative Y variables. But then we're gonna break it up across the X axis, and you can kinda of see it here in the little miniature graphic that we have multiple box plots meaning there's multiple groups. So let's go ahead and download the data and make the graphic. Now that we have the data open inside of Jump, we can actually do a little analysis of the data to start. One button that's really helpful in Jump is this icon right here. You'll notice when you click it, it actually gives you a summary of the variables. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. We have here the name. This would be the identifier of each roller coaster, and this would be unique for each and every observation. Remember, Identifiers are unique for each and every observation. Then we have the park. This would be a categorical variable because we would have different parks that each roller coaster is in. Next, we have track. This is also a categorical variable because there's different groups of track material. Next, we have speed, and this is quantitative. How many miles per hour does the roller coaster go? Next, we have height, which is gonna be in feet. How high is the roller coaster? Then we have drop in feet. How big is the drop the roller coaster has in feet? Length of the roller coaster, how long is the roller coaster in feet? Duration in seconds right here, how many seconds does the ride last? And inversions, how many times does it flip you upside down, which you can see goes from zero to one. Now that we have our data understood, let's go ahead and make our bivariate display. First, we need to take a random sample to start the assignment. So let's go over to table and then subset to take our random sample. We're gonna go here to random sample size and then enter in 100 plus the last two of our UTID. Make sure to enter in your UTID. Now let's go ahead and click OK and we will full screen it and we have gotten our random sample. Now to make our graphic, we're gonna to go to Graph Builder this time. Let's go over here to Graph and then Graph Builder. And this can graph all sorts of types of data, but we're gonna use it for side-by-side -side box plots today. Once we click it, we need to then select the X and the Y variable we're interested in. Now the Y variable is the response. It's the thing we really want to analyze. So we're interested in the speed roller coasters go. So let's go right here and go to speed and put it in the Y response. Now that this is in the Y response, we can see all the different speeds of roller coasters and it actually kind of scatters them out a little bit. We call this a point jitter and it's doing this by default. Next, we need an X variable that might explain. So we're asking, what speed do the roller coasters go? And maybe what explains the speed? Right now, we're gonna analyze the track right here and see if the track might help us explain the speed roller coasters go. When we put this down here on the X axis, we can see it's separated by steel and wood. You can see there's a lot more steel roller coasters than there are wood roller coasters. And we've almost got the graphic we want to analyze right here. Now we have options up top on how to display this data. For now, we are gonna pick a side-by-side -side box plot. With this, we've created our side-by-side -side box plot, and we just need to add a little more information to it. Let's go here and select the five number summary. This will add in the five number summary to our box plot. With this selected, we can go ahead and click done on our graphic. Last but not least, we're gonna do a little resizing to make this look great. So let's pull right here on the edge of this and give a little more white space to our graphic to separate everything out. Now that we have our graphic created, let's go ahead and take a great screenshot. So go ahead to Snipping Tool or Command Shift 4 and create a screenshot. Remember that part of your assignment is how well you take the screenshot. So be very careful right here and only get the parts of the graphic you want the user to see. You can still crop the image inside of Word, but it's important to take a good, clear screenshot that shows the visualization you want to present to the user.
When it comes to analyzing this data, this is something you'll need to write up. Now remember, box plots show us the five number summary. So let's take a look at what numbers we can observe in this box plot right here. For the steel, we have the minimum, we have the Q1, we have the median, the Q3, and the max. An important thing that people often overlook is that the maximum and the minimum can be outliers. The end of the whisker right here is just where we see points that are high, but not high enough to be outliers. But in some instances, like the second box plot over here, we do have the end of the whisker being the minimum. That is because there are no outliers. So sometimes the bottom of the whisker is the minimum. We see on this box plot the min, the Q1, the median, the Q3, and the max. An important thing to do, especially right here, is to check your numbers. Look to see that 40 matches up where the minimum is if you were to trace over. Now, what can we compare with these box plots? Well, we don't really have a good idea of shape with box plots. Histograms are a better view of shape, but we can still analyze very well the center and the spread. And you'll notice right here that the center is going to be the median and the spread is going to be the IQR. Now the IQR will be the distance that Q3 is from Q1 and it's not calculated for you right here. So go ahead and subtract Q3 from Q1 for both of these to figure out what the IQR is and that would be the measure of spread. We notice some key differences though. See if you can look at these two box plots while doing your write-up to see if you see any major differences between maybe the unusual features, if there's outliers and gaps, the medians, or the spread of the data. Include this in your write-up and you'll do a great job.